This episode of 24 frames per second with Balabanos and James is brought to you by Le French Can Can, delicious homegrown popcorn straight from La Belle Province. You can check them out. You can order straight from their website or you can go to Costco, I guess, if you want to. But they've been nice enough to give us this lovely, lovely discount code, which you can use on their website to send popcorn straight to your home and enjoy your movies. What goes better with popcorn than a movie? I said that backwards, but you get the idea. (laughs) Okay, so... Let's continue. Let's continue where we left off. We left off in the Nolan Villeneuve, who is the better director? Oh, the last no. twenty-five years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's Christopher Nolan. He won. Yeah, he won the. It's poll. him. It's yeah. him. Yeah, it's him, huh? I got nothing. All right. I All really right. don't know how to. I hate these. Who's better? No, I know they're because I don't know they're different filmmakers. I mean, mm, they are very different filmmakers. I'll give them that. But Nolan has this weird thing with time. Okay. Like in all his films, he plays with time. Almost all his films. Sure, well, sure. No, all his films. Oppenheimer most recently has a, a an interesting nonlinear. It's uh, yeah. That's that's the word I'm looking for. It's he has this nonlinear approach, and I mean, it starts with Memento, which is literally yeah the opposite of non of linear. Um, but even even the Dark Knight trilogy has this. It is linear, right, in the way it plays out, but it has this weird meandering way it tells stories, right? Especially when in the Dark Knight where you have Ledger's Joker, who's really the main character of the film. Yeah, I mean, yeah Batman's yeah. just an asshole. <laughs> Batman's just an asshole ruining his fun. I can't allow that. I can't allow what? you to disparage Batman. Batman is an asshole in that Batman movie. Batman is the best, always. Batman's just there fucking the fighting end. for the 1%. The end. You have Batman. this like guy who came from nothing. He's trying to make crime less bad because he's organizing it. He wants to give back to the people of Gotham. No, he and just wants have, chaos. Yeah, Batman That's is not- this billionaire... What you're saying is insane. Insane. Okay. All right. Let's put that one to bed. Nolan. Nolan. Okay. Now. I'm joking. Hold up. Oh, God. I died. I died. I'm okay. I'm okay. You're good? Yeah. No, you're back. He's back with us. I lost my water, so I'm just going to suck along this ice. Sure. Now, I'll tell you this. As he pulls out water in my face, what an asshole. Yeah. Okay. So we are- nerve is not the worst. Sorry. The worst of the two. It's just no, that no, Nolan no. may be the better filmmaker. Just slightly Even better. Even though I will say this and it'll make you mad, I think Nolan, fi- all his films are phenomenal, but I think they're slightly overrated. Okay. Because but that's, there that's, are other films that have come out at the exact same time that are on par with what, what I'm saying. That's, that's the argument. If you're, again, if you, you don't, you're always going to hate who is on top. Everyone's going to hate someone. I, I don't feel that I'm that way. No, 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 not you. When I I'm say a you better are human. Proverbial I'm a better you. human. Yeah, the yeah. proverbial you will hate who's on top. And right now, I mean, with Oppenheimer and everything that's happening, he's on top. Although, Look, right now, I'll say this. I have not seen Oppenheimer yet, and I'm sad because I probably missed all the large format releases. If you're about to shit on Dune, we're going to fight. No, 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 I'm not. I'm not at all. I'm not. Um... Dune's issues with me are my issues, sure. not Dune's. Okay. It's my fault. I, I'm aware of it. I'll rewatch it, and it's fine. I don't want to talk about how I felt about Dune on this show ever. Um, my point is, right now what's happening, he is on top. He deserves to be on top because what he did after what we just lived through yeah. in terms of what the, the, the industry went through with COVID and the lockdowns and all that and garbage, he made people go back to the movies. Disagree. There's one person who made people go back to the Ooh. movies. It happened last year. It's Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise made people go back to the movies with Top Gun Maverick. He brought people, he brought asses to seats. And before that even happened, he was, or whatever, that movie was made at a time where there were there wasn't anything necessary. It was released at the time where they really tried to get people back in theaters, and he did. But at the same time, not only did he save the box office with that film, but what a lot of people weren't talking about was how he... And I say he set the gold standard for shooting during COVID because he was doing uh, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. And remember that that they leaked that uh, was was that an audio of him yelling at a crew member? I agreed with him 100%. Uh, uh, two guys... I'm not going to get this with you. Two guys sure. with no masks. No, but here's the thing. It didn't matter it, what, what you thought about COVID at the time. That wasn't the issue. Because you can sit there and be... Yes, the, I understand that his explanation was like the only reason we can work is because we're following these rules and if you don't, you spit in the face of everyone who works here. That's basically. right. And, and, and I respect that. Yeah, there's nothing else. Look, I'll say this. For, forget uh, COVID stuff aside, right? And masks and whatever. Yeah, he, you're probably right. The box office numbers, and if we were to look at the data, it probably shows that he is the one who brought people back to the theaters. But Mission Impossible being in... Uh, sorry, not Mission Impossible. Top uh, Gun Maverick. Top Gun Maverick being in theaters... 
did not permeate into pop culture the way Oppenheimer has. No, fair and enough. Down the line in film history classes and film schools, when they talk about, remember how we learned about how 3D was this attempt yeah. to bring people back to the theater? Because every 10, 15 years this is what they're doing. They're trying to get us back in the theater because we find reasons not to be. The TV came out, people stopped going to the movies. Uh, flat screen TVs came out, people stopped going to the movies. They brought in 3D. Uh, drive-ins like there's always been some gimmick that there was um was the other one cinemascope yeah and then the, the other one the d one that was all around Not yeah, yeah. cinemascope right? cinemascope yeah. yeah like to fully immerse and then there's 3d and there was the the, the new 3d which and, i never got into and, and d-box then, then they started talking about higher frame rates for better thing but people are like i don't know what that is <laughs> yeah and except for v video geeks and gamers yep. like the rest of the, the humanity has no idea what a frame rate is no no, no. I, I, so and, and it was ugly as hell yeah. and it was ugly as hell right so that we're constantly doing this oppenheimer though has made it so that you can't you can't have that experience at home yeah he's like no i've shot this in such a way that it needs to be viewed this way and, and I find that very interesting. And, I, and ironically, because we're talking about it, to the detriment also, of Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. I don't know if you know that. Story. No, I don't. So Dead Reckoning, it, there's this long-standing joke of like the studio asking Cruise, because it's his film. Like it mm -hmm. really starts with say, a Tom Cruise production, right? Because it's Tom Cruise. And, and they were like, are you ready to release it? Do we need asses back in seats? This Paramount, I guess. And yeah. he was like, it's not ready. <laughs> like, uh, just kept saying it's not I ready. I he can do that. Yeah. Though. That's not ready. He felt the time was right. And then boom, they announced the release date. The problem was that him and uh, Chris McCary, uh, excellent filmmaker, by the way, uh, didn't want it released when it was because they, give them credit, they've been in the industry long enough. Mm -hmm. This is yeah, Tom absolutely. Cruise has arguably been the most consistent big movie star of the Probably, last 30 yeah. years. Um, also a psycho. Because I'm just I don't, saying, I don't, I don't, I don't just jumping it. off of things. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, guy, yeah. the, the guy will put his body Yeah, away. yeah, which I respect. He, Forget his personal stuff. That guy cares that you have. He his whole passion is for you to have the best time in yeah, the theater, and I, exactly. I respect that on a, on, a, on a, just a professional. No, so level. I'm just fucking around. Yeah, obviously. but they saw the Barbenheimer phenomenon coming, and one of the key aspects to uh, previous Mission Impossible films uh, blockbuster status, and their the real reason that they can they're able to make more movies is money coming in was IMAX screens. Yeah, and they said. We can't release it one week before this because they Barbenheimer, bought up all the fucking screens. Well, this Barbenheimer phenomenon, because we're gonna lose all the IMAX screens, and the studio is like, no, we're keeping the date. And I think it was to the detriment of the film because I'm not saying by any it was on means, newer screens. Yeah, and I'm not saying by any means it, fa it 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 failed. Although comparatively, yeah, it made way less money than previous films, and it saw something like a 62 percent drop week over week, Oof. which is which is wh that kind of stuff happens to horror films, you know, that get they make their entire budget back, like their micro first budget horror films, they yeah. make their entire budget back the first weekend, and then it doesn't matter if they fall off 60% on the next weekend because yeah, they, made, so much they money. made money. This is not one of those films. Mission Impossible needed to have legs. And essentially, to continue this insane uh, uh, metaphor, the legs were cut out from under them because they lost all the screens. Like they got to, a bomb to, dropped on them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. See what you did nice. there? Uh, so, okay. We're done with the Nolan. No, hold on. Hold You're hold not on. I'm, I'm not done because I was talking about how it permeated into popular culture, sure. right? So, Barbie. There was this, <clears throat> the whole Barbenheimer phenomenon, right? Okay. It seems like that originated through memes and that's how it spread. I was reading an article the other day and I can't remember where. Like, I wish I could find it and show it. So you're you. saying already it was going to be big, but social media propelled it to... It seemed like someone thought it was funny that they were coming out at the same time, like okay. double feature, and they created the Barbenheimer phenomenon, right? But I'm pretty sure that, that was someone in the studio, marketing team, at Barbie. Like, okay. It's see, and I remember reading this article saying, like, there's no way this just happened. Like, things don't blow up like this, which they can. We, look, I thought it was cool. I think Barb, the, what they did with the marketing of Barbie was fucking genius. Because yeah, yeah. obviously, Nolan did all the work here. He did the legwork. He got it back. He shot in 75, 65. Yeah, I sure. Yeah, IMAX, whatever it is. Yeah, I forget. But he shot, know. like, not scenes. He shot the vast majority. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, IMAX. changes format, so it needs to be IMAX. And they're like, and he, he built this buzz around the film, which was what I was talking about earlier. And then Barbie's like, yeah, released at the same time as him. The internet will do the rest. And I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Okay. You think someone like, at. I have not seen Barbie. Uh, my wife took my daughter to see it. I'm like, I'm not in a rush. For me, Barbie is a watch at home one day. Yeah. It, 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 it's, 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 it's fun. A lot I'm sure of fun. it's fun, it's right? So I have no fun. doubt. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't going to get me back in the theater. 
Okay. Barbie, get out of here. Got my wife like, back in the theater. Yeah, but okay, fine. But the, she's the target demo, right? Yeah. But it wasn't going to get me or you. or I mean, you're always in the theater. That's not the point. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying, right? No, I know, I know exactly so, what you're saying. To mix it with Oppenheimer like that, to create this weird, uh, you know, you know, you, you know, moment I really like marketing, yeah. And what moment I really liked that really fed into that was watching Greta Gerwig, who's the director of Barbie, and uh, shout out now she's now the highest grossing female filmmaker yeah. ever. And uh, made I mean, really let's not oversell it. Like she didn't buy some unknown IP and make no, an indie fair, film. It's fair, fucking Barbie. fair enough. But you know what? When when this film was being developed, there was just as much chance of it being a colossal failure. Not after Oppenheimer. Oh, yeah, okay, States. right, right. And, and so Greta and Margot Robbie. Well, Barbie is probably Nolan's biggest success. <laughs> <laughs> they bought tickets to Oppenheimer, and I think then mm -hmm. Nolan and Killian Murphy bought tickets to Barbie for the opening night. Genius, genius. Yeah, and I, I thought that was genius. It Just is. It's genius marketing. Brilliant. The, the marketing of films is almost as interesting as the films themselves. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And particularly when you do something like this. I mean, I thought I thought when Cloverfield got released, that was the most genius marketing move ever. Oh, I don't know if you remember think, this. Um, so this is this is 2008? Eight, nine. No, eight, 2008. Eight, 2008, eight, eight, yeah. I was the, so I, I am with an old friend that you remember. I'm with Mark, and we're, we're going to see its opening weekend of the original, the first Transformers movie. Oh, yeah. And Oh, my God. Yes, I remember that. And this. I'm sitting in the theater, and I'm excited. I'm like, I grew up watching, you know. Uh, Optimus. Just, yeah, yeah. I'm like, this is going to be fun. Let's, have, let's, go, let's go, you know? And then we're watching the trailers, and I am one of those people, like, I'm, I'm physically upset if I miss, even though I've, I probably I never missed the trip on my never. on my laptop. Doesn't matter. I want to see them. I want to see them on the big screen. I want to feed. Gets the me reaction. in the mood for yeah. the movie. You know. So and it's the only time you get to really be an asshole. I mean, we're doing it on the podcast, but like the uh, yeah, it yeah. sucks. <laughs> I'm not watching that. So, I think it's an old Dane Cook joke. Yeah, me. Yeah. You know, so I'm I'm sitting in the theater and this like these vignettes start coming in yes, of people yes, running in the street. And chaos, and like I think it's it's it, it's literally shows like home video of a uh, coming home party or surprise yeah, party, yeah, whatever it is. Rooftop. Yeah, well, and they're on the yeah, top yeah, part, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. someone like the lights go out, oh, and they they get up in the roof, and they see an explosion in the distance. And I'm like, you know, this is a post 9/11 world. I'm like, this is New York, clearly. Yeah, what yeah. the hell's going on here? And everybody runs downstairs in the building, and rumbles falling down, and all that chaos. But it's done all in that home video it's style. Shaky cam, yeah. And they get on the street, and all of a sudden the head of the Statue of Liberty just crashes in the middle of the street. And then you have that whole of like the camera cutting. Yeah. And then it literally just says- Bad robot. It, it was a bad robot. Bad robot was the beginning. And it literally just says some like, like whatever, 1108. Yeah. yeah. Just the date, just the release date. 01, 01, 18, 08, I think. Yeah. January 18th, 2008, I guess. Yeah. Or, or 2000, that whatever bad robot. That's what I got. I was like, what's happening here? But here's the crazy thing. That film was not announced. Nobody knew what's that. It was to the point where people were watching Transformers and then calling the offices of Paramount and Bad Robot. Does saying, that happen? Yeah, yeah. Saying, what the hell was this? And everybody in those offices- There was a title card, though. It said Never, never said- Project Cloverfield, nothing, nothing. no? Nothing, I'm telling you, literally, the title seemed to be the release date, and they, they were I instructed- I will fight you on it. I'm telling you right now, I remember this because it was like- the, every one of the offices were instructed once they were called, and we're talking about like Variety was calling Hollywood Reporter, all these okay. trades saying, what was this? And everyone's going, I don't know what you're talking about. And it's and it almost amazing. like, it was like the first Cloverfield viral. Great. Yeah, man. And it ended up, look, I Who really was the second one called? Cloverfield 2? No, no, no. So they never, had like a, man, they, never actual, they never had an actual sequel. Uh, believe it or not, the closest thing, the I'm sequel. John Goodman. Yeah, that was called Ten Cloverfield Lane. Yeah. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ten Cloverfield. But that Lane. was basically another film just reworked into the Cloverfield world. I can't remember the ending of that movie. What was the thing that was above them? So, I don't want to spoil it in case no one's seen it. That's yeah, why. you don't want to do that. So the the premise of this movie is essentially that uh, yeah, a girl gets to a car accident, kind of wakes up in a bunker uh, where she's been taken in, uh, being told that she was taken in for her protection because. Some crazy shits happening yeah. above the bunker in like, the world. Midwest somewhere, right? Yeah, like, there's like monsters or I don't know what, something, something's happening. And the whole time, you don't know, is this like real? Is he actually bringing her down to protect her? Or is this is just a, psycho. a crazy man who's kidnapped mm -hmm. this woman? I really recommend that film. Yeah, John Goodman is phenomenal in that. So so marketing for, for films has, I mean, that was Abrams for Cloverfield. But Abrams is next level in terms of understanding pop culture and how it functions. Yeah. Like will, what he yeah. does... 
I mean, there's the Abrams flare, right? Like I have plug-in packs called Abrams flares. Like the guy, he's up there with Ken Burns at this point, yeah, yeah. right? In terms of he had something named after him. So it's interesting. But uh, when yeah. you talk about these filmmakers and everything that they're known to do, uh, I like I like moments like what recently happened this weekend where you get to see them as uh, people. And I bring up another, when we talk about this, the world of the You're best right, filmmakers. suck so yeah, bad. We need awful, new chairs. Awful, we need new chairs. We brought, we revived, for anyone who's been on the Pantalis Comedy uh, Network for a while, we revived the This Just Thing setup because we don't have other furniture yet and we wanted to get started. But these stools are atrocious. <laughs> I'm getting a hemorrhoid. <laughs> okay. First, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say his name. I want also, a lot standing joke that I'm never comfortable. No, never. You're those, never. Yeah. Comfortable. We will get those. We get a thousand dollar chairs like posturepedic. It will not be good. Won't like it. Yeah, go on. All right, I'm gonna say the name. I want your your first. I'm gonna close few, my eyes. Few thoughts. I'm gonna close my eyes. And then I'll tell you. Sorry, right. David Fincher. Gay. David what? Fincher. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're so awful. You're so awful. I should do this podcast with anybody else, but yeah, then it would just be someone else and James. Fair enough. Yeah, Help background me. on David Fincher, uh, music video and commercial director in the '90s. Yeah, uh, finally gets to make a movie, and it is one of the most soul-crushing experiences someone can survive. Uh, he yeah, even wanted to why? take the, his name off the movie because the movie ended up being uh, so, so, so studio involvement and just like I said, soul-crushing to him. Alien Three. Well, David Fincher. Now, after that, I'm so glad he didn't yeah, what is filmmaking he because he made, uh, in my opinion, what is the most underrated movie of the 90s. It's called The Game with Michael Douglas. Highly recommend. Solid From film. The Game, he went on to make uh, what is known as, I, I, what I was considered by a lot as an actual masterpiece of the 90s, Seven. Seven. David Fincher. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, man. Finished. You know, I just, I know all of this. I just don't know their names. I forget finished, I forget people's names. Finished with Seven, worked with Brad Pitt again into... I haven't seen Seven in a long time. Oh, definitely worth a rewatch. The pop culture masterpiece or the pop culture icon of the film that followed was in 1999 with Fight Club. David Fincher. David Fincher. Uh, I feel stupid now. Like, and, I shouldn't be on this show. And then the most fascinating thing happened to him in the 2000s where he really started to carve this auteurship and step up to the next level with... Films like um, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, The Social Network. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, his, I just feel like a dick now. His version of uh, dumb, dumb dick dick. of that Millennium Trilogy, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Yeah, which I was not for me, but whatever. Sure. I've watched them all, but that, that's, odd. that's fine. Um, and then more recently, uh, he had a Netflix film called Mank, which is I've for, for film that. lovers, it's something else. Like, like, I don't think your wife will like it, but I think you will. I mean, the last movie that I saw that was clearly made for movie people, uh, like, you know, yeah, yeah, either cinephiles or people in the industry, and that I watched and I thought was the greatest thing I've seen in forever. I mean, I understood what it was, right? So I wasn't like, this is a masterpiece. I was like, this was oops, so much fun. And Anna Fell Asleep Twice was the, uh, what is the title? Hold on, don't tell me. The unbearable weight of massive talent. Oh, that, yeah, was that yeah, the title? Yeah, the unbearable weight. Yeah, of massive the Nicolas talent. Cage playing Nicolas Cage. I thought that was genius, phenomenal, genius. I love phenomenal. it. Phenomenal. Was that so, vampire movie he's made now? It was it Redfield. Called? Yeah, so Redfield. I started it. Okay, and I was like, I don't think I'm in the right state of mind for this. I'm stopping. Yeah, I'm, I'm, wait. I'm looking forward to watching. I'm waiting for that reason. But as I well. want to jump before we leave this because you're in the '90s again, and we said last week we were talking. Well, about hold on. It. I just I just wanted okay. to get to the point of what I was saying. So I gave you guys. Oh, uh, I thought there was a no, point. no. The, yeah, the David I must Fincher. Have out. Sorry. The David Fincher background. So now he's really stepped into this. What's like, he doing now? Auteurship. So his latest film, uh, he stepped aside and did TV for a while. Did Mindhunter on Netflix. Oh which, right, yes. Yeah, everybody yes. loved. They're begging for a third season. Not going to happen. Sorry. Mm. Uh, so he did this film called The Killer with Michael Fassbender, where it just- I like Fassbender. It will, it is a, it hasn't come out yet. It is a deep dive into the mind of a paid assassin and the, the, what he has to deal with and when he just doesn't want to do it anymore, but done in David Fincher style. So, uh, either I'd read two things. I read mixed re reviews out of Venice. And then I also made, uh, read a five minute standing ovation, which is also true. Now both can be true because Venice is known for the standing ovation for the filmmakers. Now, David Fincher did not know this, and this is the news story, is you can find footage. He is visibly uncomfortable, doesn't know what to do. Actually, he puts his hands up like, what is happening to the standing ovation? And then is led by a producer to what he thinks is exiting 
the theater the only to be told like no no only to be told like no dude you have to bathe in this uh plot bask in it yeah bask in it and you would think you know if directors tend to be like egomaniacs right and you let not, though, yeah and i know he is so uncomfortable i beg of you to see this and it's I it, find there's no that other such word. an unfair uh, opinion of, that people believe that. Sure, but listen, it's kind of adorable. It's hilarious yes, to it watch is. him, especially this guy who's known for making these dark films. Like that Tarantino, explore. Tarantino, for as a point of contrast, he basks. Oh, uh, Tarantino, Tarantino basks. basks. Tarantino it. eats. You'll see, I'm shocked. His like, tongue isn't out yeah, all the time. He, you know, he I mean? loves it. You can tell that's a big part of what he loves about it. Look, I like it too. Like we've made films. I've made films that have premiered, and we've had people like. Hundreds of people. I mean, I think one of our premieres had 300 people, right? Yeah. Which is pretty big for a small indie shot on nothing. And I remember, like, I love watching the crowd. Uh, sorry, I'm so like, like ooh me. and ah. <laughs> Not the ooh and ah. I just, for me, directing is, uh, I remember a quote, I forget, it's Hitchcock. He's like, you direct the audience, right? Right. He always said that. So I love watching that play out like i we did this I, I decided to go like that and make the camera do this and the character whatever whatever that might be and i expect the audience to do certain things okay when these things happen sometimes you miss and it hurts oh, it's, it's so, like a, it's like a so knife deep. it's it like a knife so just deep. cutting across your chest and you're like oh i fucked up i thought i done fucked up but when it works forget the movie for a second forget the visuals just watching those silhouetted heads because i always sit in the back right kind of respond exactly how you expected you're like oh it's like it's like adrenaline and it, it's, it's it's just going crazy down there. i don't know it's like a crazy <laughs> you've been there shut up yeah i have it's I a have. crazy ego boost right not down there i've been in it's <laughs> been inside <laughs> what um yeah it's uh it's it's really a trip but then after because we've had people i mean a lot of them know us they're, they're not strange not like i went to venice and i had a standing ovation yeah but like there's applause and there's whatever. And we've done festivals too together where yep. people were like really impressed because like we had no business being in that festival. None whatsoever. Like, it's like we didn't get the memo of what we were making a movie for. Yeah. We're like, we're going to make a real film. And here are five shorts that somebody else made, right? Right, right. And and the, the crowd's reaction, it makes me very uncomfortable. Yeah. Right? The only... Uh, well, you know me. I don't watch. Like, no, you leave. Yeah. I leave. I like to watch the crowd. Like I really enjoy watching yeah, I, the I, crowd. I, I, I leave. But the after, you love the after. Don't pretend. The Q and A, you love all of that. I like the Q and A. You like that, that 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 we made this, and we want to know how your brain works. Yeah, yeah. I don't like that. I, so I no, I don't. I don't like. I don't do the applause. I don't like any of that part. But I will. I like Q and A, and I'm not lying. I like. I like the Q and A because. It, I look, I it, like the Q and A a bit too. It tells me whether because applause and whatever those could just be like. Platitudes. Platitudes. Yeah. And like, oh, we have to clap because the movie's over or whatnot. <laughs> we uh, have to clap because the yeah. movie's over. Yeah, Q&As I Thank like. Thank God it's over. <laughs> I've applauded for shit movies because yeah. I'm just glad they were done. Sure, and that's why I don't know. I like Q&As because uh, I want to know, it, depending on the questions, whether I did the job I was supposed to do. Because I've yeah, had I mean, films. it's the ultimate feedback oh, yeah, situation. It's an immediate right? feedback too. And I've had films where, where you the audience... you can get that information watching the crowd. The Q&A... I almost feel like it, it takes, like you, you watch like a Nolan film, right? Since we're sure. talking about him. You don't get to ask Nolan questions. You got to figure that shit out by yourself. Okay. I almost feel like it takes away from the experience to have to ask me things. Okay. Like about the theme or story or backstory. Like if they're asking because I wasn't clear and I fucked up, well, you can see that in the you, crowd. You like, what the hell is happening? Okay. But I, I, I can't do it then. Maybe, to you, I don't know. I can't do it. I that. mean, it's been a long time since we've had a premiere of anything. Yeah. I think we we rescreened Dichotomous a couple of years ago, right before COVID, I remember. Yeah. And yeah. you weren't there, but I went. You did go. Yeah. And people were, I mean, people exa responded exactly how I expected them because I had seen a crowd respond to it before. And I saw them lull in the parts of the film that fucking suck. They just lull. Well, it had, uh, it had a tiny little bit of a pacing issue that we only It saw. had a pacing issue that we were aware of. We, we, were, we, we were saw it only in like the third We were third on the edit. clock. We had a deadline. We had no money. Like, I'm, I'm not trying to make excuses, but like we knew there was a problem, but there was no way to fix it. Yeah. Right? We didn't have enough coverage to do any of that. Do you remember the reaction of the crowd at the Greek film festival in Montreal for Occam's Razor? So Occam's Razor is a film Peter made, which is arguably probably... No, it is. It's Peter's best work. Thank you. Uh, it has no business being produced for what it was part of. It was an anthology yeah. film festival. And I remember watching it. I'll, I'll get to that. But I remember watching it at its actual premiere. Yeah. That so was I at saw, Cinematic Park. Yeah. Like, three, I won't name what was going on because I don't want to 
people to know the films I'm talking shit about, right? And the that filmmakers. Hundreds of people. Yeah, God, it was a lot of people. It must have been 400 people. Yeah. Uh, nah, 350. I'm just saying, Casino Vajapak, that's their cap. Whatever, that's why yeah, I'm yeah. just saying. So there was like three or four movies. Were you last? No, you weren't last. No, you were was, second was before, from the end. Yeah, second from the end, yeah. No, there was two films after you. No, no, one film after me. Uh, what? Yeah. Okay, so we watched like five or six films, whatever, and they were progressively like one worse than the other. It was... I felt like I was in film school again. I think I may have still been in film school, but it Probably. felt like when we used to screen our work at the end of the week and I was like, oh God, how am I going to sit right, and right. do this, right? And then this movie starts, I'm like, yo, this is, this is solid. And it's the first thing I had ever seen on a big screen that he had made. I had seen yeah. Nervous, but I had never seen Never on a big screen, yeah. And I was like, this is, this son of a bitch, because this is good. <laughs> Thank you. And I got into it, and I was like, this is very good. Thank you. And then it ends, and I was like, oh, it's fucking great. And I'm about to stand up. And when another movie comes on, I'm like, oh, there's more. I was like, this is garbage. Yeah. But I wanted to go last and and I I, mean, I didn't have a say in that. Yeah. So. But like everyone who came before him was it was not they were not solid. There was a lot of art artsy stuff too happening. And then the last film was not I disagree. I like I like one or two of the ones that came was one or two that were okay, but they weren't films. They were like little student movies. They weren't films. This was a film. It was a short film, but it was a film. Like it had every element it needed to have. The actors were next level. Except for George. George sucked. George sounds results. Yeah. George, George, you guys know George. <laughs> George, yeah, right. George. George is the weakest part of the whole movie. I had I had an actor cast, and then the, the day before Didn't show, the yeah. shoot calls me. He's like, I'm not going to be able to make it. But this is not like I can move. He's not, uh, but it's just, I'm not going to be able to make it. Can we shoot another time? I'm like, no, this is not uh, Hollywood. Either way, if that was on Hollywood, you would have yeah, actually would've been fired. Happen. He would have been sued. So like, I panicked, and I was seeing George that day, and I just said, hey, listen, I injured. He's like, he's like, George, I had an African-American actor. You seem like the perfect <laughs> replacement for him. George is like, yeah, bro, no problem. Do I say N-bombs? And you're like, no, no, George, no, no, no N-bombs. Came in with his, his Park X accent. Uh, bro, where's the files, bro? Getting hot. So. <laughs> so good, so good. Actually, I'm going to take a moment here. Completely out of it. I doubt I know you ever, ever watched this. Oh, but one of the films before uh, belonged to an extremely wait, wait, talented... careful, because I talked a lot of shit. If you give away any of them, they'll know what I'm talking about. Oh, listen, I don't think any of these people will care. Uh, Most of them I, I don't work care anymore. <laughs> but, but, but one that was really good was a, a film called Reflections, or Reflections, and that was by a very talented local filmmaker named Maud Michaud. Oh, wait, uh, I remember that one. Maud, that was okay, yeah. Maud, that was the second Maud is, film. Maud is awesome, and I think she just had a new film premiere at uh, Fantasia. So oh, really? Shout out to Maud. She's awesome. Check her out. Maud Michaud. Well, the other ones were bad. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, like yeah, I didn't care for the <laughs> I didn't care for the, the other cast. Ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um what were we talking about? So you watched that you watched Hawkins Razor? Yeah. So I were... I had seen it with a with the right type of crowd. Like it's a suspense. It has like a paranormal element to it. Uh it's it's the most Peter thing he's ever made, but I had, the crowd was there for that. And it was so much stronger than the other films that they were like captivated. <laughs> then I watched it at the Greek Film Festival because I got one of my films in, which you were a part of too, obviously. Uh, and they're like, do you have anything else? I go, well, Peter has another movie. Yeah, he put me on the spot. And, and, I, and I was like, like what are you talking about? It had, been, it had aged a bit. Yeah, it had like been, five, it had been years. a couple of years, but they, they told me they were oh, They well. really needed another, otherwise we wouldn't get the anthology set. Yeah. It was like a showcase of my movies and another Greek uh, yeah. filmmaker, and they wanted one more. I go, well, Peter has his own movie that I wasn't a part of, and they're like, sure, throw it in the pile. This is a really dark, violent, violent uh, gritty and nothing to do with anything it's related not Greek, to really Greek at yeah. all. Yeah. It's just, I it's just that it Greek. so happened to be that he's Greek and I was trying to negotiate the showcase and I really wanted to premiere the film again yeah. and they really wanted me to, but then we, uh, we, we need one more movie. Oh, I was like, well, I'm not going to give you my other film because it doesn't make sense because we had shot 1501 yeah, at that point. Yeah. I go, because it's a zombie movie, so it doesn't yeah, so you, fit here. So you so threw in like, a Frank. I was like, <laughs> let, let, let Peter have his own premiere because like, I mean, Dichotomous is both of us, but like Sudocracy is me, more or less. Yeah. Right? Like the, the title cards are mine. Yeah, yeah. 1501, the title cards are mine also. Yeah. But Dichotomous, we co-directed, but like, I'm like, let him have his own fucking movie. Like he's, he's clearly the better filmmaker. Let it be in here. Yeah. I, I felt so People awkward. People fucking lost their minds. Man, that, that was the worst Q&A session I've ever done. Why would you make this? I was like, whoa, why do, why do you, there's you, a loaded question. Why do you feel the need to be so violent, so dark? And it was like- Did your dad touch you? Yeah. But it'd be, it'd, it'd be, no, but I told yeah. It, no, nobody yeah, said he touched that. me. Yeah. No, I'm laughing at the idea that these people <laughs> were, were were so, so not into this movie. It was like walking into a, a Toys R Us and there was a rack of dildos. That was, the, 
the, and then you go so, to the manager. You're like, what is yeah, this? That's a perfect Why analogy. Is this here? That's a that's, that's a what it was. Analogy. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it had some sexual undertones too, yeah, like yeah. which my films don't. No, uh, no, except for no, they don't. Well, your film had is a so it's a Greek film festival. His film is a had a it was very, produced for that film festival, it, right? It had a lot of Greek elements. My film was made years prior. Uh, with the aim of being part of the Fantasia Film Festival in my yeah. genre. Yeah, film Peter's a, uh, like if if I, if I had to dilute you down into one genre, it's horror. It's horror suspense, probably. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, like, I'm that's not, your yeah, I, but but like vampires, but bro, loves vampires, sure, angsty no, vampires. I'm actually, no, I, the shinier I, 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 the better. I'm the crime thriller guy. That that's what okay, the film well, was dressed up as horror, but it was a crime thriller. It was a crime thriller, but but you love like you I love also horror. Really love. Like, yeah. I don't like horror. I appreciate horror. 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 But like, I want slow burn, no jump scare horror. Okay. Like psychological. Like Prince of Darkness is one of my favorite horror so, movies. So, have you it, watched any A twenty four films? Like that studio. Mm, oh man, I'm those scary. scares. No, those, I'm films, so scared. those films. I watched Archive eighty four. Awesome. Is that what it's called? Archive eighty one. Eighty one. Yeah, on Netflix last yeah. year. It was awesome. And I loved it. It's one of my favorite so, series. So you'll years. love. But I was up every hour. Yeah, yeah. you'll you'll David. love. I, I, I'll write you a list it's of It's my eight. imagination. I can't control it. I'll write you a list of eight of uh, that studio, A24's horror I know films. what they are. I can't oh, see. God, I don't you know what it's incredible. like to be a 37-year-old man and you go pee in the middle of the night and you turn on all the lights just in case? Yeah, yeah. Like, okay. no. no. Oh, no. Oh, the... Shout out here because I uh, well, hit the mic. Don't uh, hit the mic. We, we, we so, like talking about on this show, I really want to talk about right? movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that haven't come out yet. Yeah. Um, but wait, we have to go back first. Okay. Three Ninjas. The ultimate pinnacle of 90s filmmaking. Like pop culture filmmaking. It is, right? Absolutely. It has everything. Not. It's a bunch of rich white kids. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, in, in the in the worst possible sense, I mean. It's okay. a bunch of rich white kids with like a token Japanese who's actually a Chinese actor grandfather who teaches them to be ninjas over a summer and they're pro ninjas. Yep. And then gives them these masks, which is like the next level of cultural appropriation that I, I've never even seen such they're kabuki a style like, masks. Kabuki, yeah. They're kabuki style masks. That's right. <laughs> And then they use them code ninja names, which yeah. are not Japanese at all. Rocky for being strong. Let's and, look uh, uh, like a rock. Dum dum. Colt for being like like like, like the horse. I guess yeah. For being free spirited and always wanting to run ahead. Or tum -tum. Run. And then Tum Tum because he liked to eat. Man. And then and then these three chubby nin tubby the tubby white ninjas. No, like the only, Whatever, the, only yeah. the third one. Was they they play baseball obviously because yeah. that's what ninjas do in their off time. And they have rage issues, which I mean, that's pretty relatable for a teenage boy. But then, then they have like a secret lair bedroom with like, like a like a camera buzzer. No, they had the buzzer. The buzzer. Oh, mom's going to hide the ninja <laughs> shit. Like it's my daughter watches. She goes, "This movie is bad." I'm like, "Yes, this movie it's is bad." Awesome. What are you it's talking awesome. about? What are you teaching your daughter those movies? And you know what? I love watching old '90s. They made like, a bunch of them. So they made. made well, no, no, no. They so made they more made than three ninjas. Yeah. Then the sequel. Uh, was called Three Ninjas Kickback. Of course, they, they actually do. go to Japan. Yeah, they go to Japan and they fight Japanese. That's right. It's, the third so one racist. is called Three Ninjas Knuckle Up. And I think, by the way, <laughs> I've never seen that. By the way, the kid who plays Rocky is only in the first and third one. It's played by a different actor in the second. That one. makes perfect sense. And then, um, so that one was like, they but this was that Native time in, in in history, right? Like it was that but, Ninja oh, Turtles Karate Kid. Yeah, yeah, it's true. They had all these ninja themed things, and then you had because Power Rangers was big. Mm. Like PG violence was huge in the night. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's good times. And then there's another sequel, and it shouldn't be, but it's it's called Three Ninjas High Noon at Mega Mountain. Oh my so god, like I've seen this with Hulk Hogan. Yes, yes, <laughs> that's awesome. Arguably the best of the franchise. <laughs> Brother. Brother. <laughs> okay, hold on. Yeah, what were you gonna say? So uh, I I went on. I the, wanted to cap that circle. Fair enough. Off because of last episode. I went on the tangent with um with a24 mm -hmm. so and their their horror releases i always look forward to a24 horror I'm releases scared. so these are movies Chicken. like you know ari oster films like hereditary or midsommar or um um midsommar i've seen yeah midsommar hurt me in bad yeah, 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 yeah. it touched me in places so these are me. rough watches but they're yeah. like the lighthouse oh incredible movie by the way so uh, Mr. What's It Called's phone was solid, but it's not a twenty-four. That's not a twenty-four. No, yeah, no yeah. I'm just saying it's based off a Stephen King novel. Yeah. Oh my god, what did you just make me watch recently? I forgot the title already. Oh, Midnight Mass. Midnight yeah. Mass on Netflix. <laughs> Go watch Midnight awesome Mass. Awesome show. And come and tell me in the comments if you hate it or you love it. Yeah. My wife thought it was the biggest waste of our week ever. I thought I haven't felt that way since 
I don't know, man. That Since was, Angel. That was awesome. Since Angel. I'll, I'll, I want to come back to Midnight so Mass. So good. So but, good. But check no. this out. You know what? The last movie that captivated me, that was film. But I can't remember the title. Is it called Darkness? Where they're in the cave? They go down into a cave. They get trapped in a cave. The women you're talking about? No. Men and women. Okay. They go. It's like maybe 15 years old. Oh, Peter, come it's on. The cave? Is it the cave? There's a movie the called the, the cave. cave. It's exactly what you just said. Like the neanderthal Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I thought you were talking about The Descent, which is arguably better which than The Cave. Which one's The a group of women that uh, like to go rock climbing or... That's, that's relatively lunky. new, though. No, The Descent is older than The Cave. What's the prime villain? Spoiler alert, this one time. Like kind of uh, these weird Neanderthal monster type things. Oh, also... Lived in the darkness. Oh, both? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like chocolate dates. Well, exactly, yeah. So the, the Descent was an incredible film by Neil Marshall. Maybe I'm thinking of The Descent. Then. And The Cave was like the Hollywood version of it, and it had Cole Hauser in it. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's The Cave I'm thinking of, yeah. but I love both of those films. Sure. Yeah. Well, they, 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 they bring... It's, it's horror, but it there's something else going on. The and ca- also, it's misleading. Like, like for me, horror, for me, I love when horror and comedy touch. Okay. Like, touch if they... Just a little. <laughs> okay. Like, Cabin in the Woods is one of my favorite movies That's of all time. That set the bar incredibly I know high. we're not supposed to talk about that period in, in movie making anymore because Joss Whedon turned out to be a dick. Yeah, yeah. But, like... But you know what? That movie's Firefly, Drew Goddard's film. Buffy. It is Drew Goddard's film. You're right. But Firefly, Buffy, Angel, uh, that other one he did. It was a Dollhouse. Alias. Alias. No, he did that not. He did Dollhouse, 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 which was yeah. the alias rip. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got confused there. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. But like Whedon, the first Avengers. Yeah. I mean, those are Whedon movies and shows, He's right? that movie he shot in his backyard, the Shakespeare. Much oh, Ado yeah. About that is a phenomenal film. So if Phil, you've never seen that. Yeah. Much Ado About Nothing by Joss Whedon is an absolute awesome Shakespeare movie. Phil and it's straight up Shakespeare. It's black and white Shakespeare. Shot it over a weekend. He, he was just bored with some rich buddies. Edited the dialogue. Buddies. He used to invite the cast and crew of his shows to like do Shakespeare Hang readings out. at his house, and then decided to just shoot Much Ado About Nothing I went in his to backyard. See that at uh, what's that? We place? saw it at the AMC. We saw it together. The, yeah, that's right. You no, shushed me. AMC? Yes, it was at the AMC, and you shushed me because I laughed so hard oh, yeah. at Nathan Fillion scene. He steals every scene he's in. I was like really cackling like a yeah, yeah, yeah. hyena. And this is, this is guys, this is not modernized like Leo, Leo DiCaprio, Romeo no, and Juliet. Even, Leo DiCaprio is the same, it's the original dialogue. Yeah. Oh shit, you're right. Yeah. So this is not like like one of these Shakespeare remakes where they just take the basic story and- Yeah, yeah, whatever. you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah this is, anyways. Me, so, mea culpa. What I wanted to talk about with A24. Yeah. So, um, I'm reading this story. You watch that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to watch that. Good. I'm reading this story a while back about a film getting released at the, or getting premiered at Sundance. Um, it's an A24 horror film, which already got me interesting. Interested, sorry. And the, made uh, yeah, saying. made me interesting. Cool. Yeah. And so the, the title of this film is Talk to Me. Talk to Me? Yeah, Talk to Me. And I remember reading the premise Sun about group of friends who find this like dead hand and then when they grab it they're able to kind of see the other side almost like a very flat night flatliners type way Ooh, that's and they and then one of them stays too long and brings something back I'm, i haven't seen the film so I'm, that's just the premise that i've been given and i was like that's oh, that thinks of peter james i go that sounds yeah that sounds like something i'd make i'm like it's really interesting and then i start re- like they go di- like directed by uh peter james the, is like what the filippo brothers and Great i people. go i go wait i know these names do you know who the Danny and oh, I know Danny Filippo, but I forget his brother's name. They're the Raka Raka. Raka Raka? Those YouTube guys, the Greek Australians who used to make those crazy, like, no idea. you don't know the Raka Raka. No. Shout out the Raka Raka right now. Everybody stop this podcast. No, don't go, stop this podcast. And go on YouTube and just type the Raka Raka. I have no idea what this is. Okay, once this podcast I'll check it out. Blow your I will mind. check it out. Yeah, yeah. So these two Greek Australian guys who used to make movies in their house, like, incredible little mini ridiculous films yeah, yeah, by yeah. the way uh, like like Ronald McDonald fighting the Burger King like yeah yeah <laughs> but like an ultra violent wrestling That's awesome. yeah, yeah crazy stuff um, and then the, I guess they took it seriously and they made this film that was purchased by A24 for a ridiculous amount of money or was it produced by A24 and then pitched, anyway. p- bought by another distributor and the film has been making bank at the box office called? Talk to me. Talk to me. Yeah. I think I've seen a trailer for this. It, it, yeah, I'll sh- yeah. I was looking it's at all nice. Like, I don't watch a lot of horror movies, but I love horror trailers. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's true. We do have that yeah. conversation. You'll so, watch horror so, like, trailers. I watched that and The Lake House, I believe. The Night House. The Night House. I made you watch The Night House. That I'll yeah. watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That seems like a... That's also, on Disney you Plus. You sold me on Barbarian. Yeah. And I watched it. Oh, how good was Barbarian? fucking wild. <laughs> That's wild. Awesome. 
awesome. It, movie. I'm watching it and I was like, then I tell you, forget I, I everything. You, I like when comedy and Justin Long, touch. Justin Long is underrated. Is he's so underrated. He's my he's a darling. Just the, if he ever watches this, Justin, we would love to have you on this show and I will keep praise on you because I think you are an incredibly talented Justin underrated. Long. He really is underrated, yeah. Um yeah, fucking the Nighthouse. I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, Rebecca, you? Rebecca Hall. No, no. Oh, yeah. So here's the thing: uh, like, uh, you don't like horror. I love it's horror not, films. Okay, you, you misunderstand that. I think so you can't watch horror. them. I love them. I love how they build suspense. I love, but they they stay with me. Okay, like I can't disconnect from the so, film after. So, like I become too involved in it. Fair enough. And I have the same problem. So my wife. It goes back to why I thought I was gonna be Indiana Jones. Like. Once I'm in the movie, yeah, you're in I'm it. in the movie. You're in it, yeah, yeah. Like movies like, I don't know, uh, like Cloud Atlas, for example. Okay. Which, one of the funniest movie-going experiences of my life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, how can, can we tell that story with it being not a you-had-to-be-there moment? It'll be a you-had-to-be-there yeah, moment. Yeah, okay. yeah. Anyways, whatever. We just, we laughed really hard in the yeah. theater a lot. Uh, Cloud Atlas, I was fucked up for like a week after Cloud Atlas. Okay. Because the idea of jumping like that, or, uh, oh, what is it called? With Bill Nighy. The greatest movie ever made. The greatest man movie ever made. That's not an action man film. Man movie ever made. About time. Oh, about time. About time. Oh, Every I've seen about time many times. Right. See, I can't. I've seen it, it like twice. I've seen now. it maybe five times. Because if it's on, I'll just watch it. Then I'm fucked up forever. I'm, yeah, I'm not okay after about time. About time for a man is, I think, what the Notebook is for a woman. Yeah. So you'll just cry for. You just cry. Any, I and I don't you, I, I and challenge. then you're just sitting at home by yourself listening to Jimmy Fontana going yeah man and you're crying. I, I challenge and with any me. man to watch about time and not and cry. not cry. Yeah, there's that other one uh, that deals with time jumping. Also, it's uh, I feel like it's a British film where every time this guy goes to sleep, ten years pass or something. It's what's his what's his fucking name? Yeah, talking about the time traveler's wife. No, right? no, no. That is an overrated film. In my opinion. Yeah, well, it's it was fine. It was not. Fine. It was not a particularly well-made film, and I think it's a hard film to translate from the book to. I guess. Screen. Yeah, the Time even, Machine they, is a better movie, and it's still a bad movie. Guy Pierce is yeah. the Time Machine. It's still a bad movie, and awful, it's a better movie. Awful, awful I'll stop movie. it. That's cool. Awful awful film. Movie. I I love Guy Pierce, but no. But what is? Movie. Oh boy, started off on the BBC. Big jaw, big nose, funny guy. Got like a corner of this corner of cadence to him. <laughs> Corner, corner, corner of this cadence, cadence to it, yeah. yeah. It's funny, but it's not too funny. Okay. No, and he like, every time he falls asleep, 10 years have gone by, so oh, he like, goes through a divorce. I have no idea. His what daughter this. grows up. This is rare. I Guys, have no I, idea. That's all I remember. If someone can find it and have it ready please, for me. For, please hit us up in the so comments. we can talk about it in the next episode, because we are done. We are absolutely done. Uh, these, maybe 40 minutes too short. It feels like it goes by fast. It goes by real fast. I'm really hungry though now. Okay. Like, I want popcorn. Well, let's let them tell us, too. Do you guys want the shows to be longer? I mean, let us know. That's a camera. They, the camera can't respond. My name is Phil Balbanos. This has been 24 frames per second. This is my boy, Peter Otis James. James. Otis James. Otis James. I like that. I'm going to go by Otis James if, now. Okay, but yeah. we'll have to dye your skin and get you a saxophone. That's so, so not happening. Permanent blackface, Otis James. I want to use AI generative AI to turn you into a please, black guy. Please don't do that. I'm gonna please do don't that. do that. I'm going to post it everywhere on the Discord. Uh, I think by now, second episode, Pantel has probably has created a Discord for us. Yeah. We will interact with you there should you so choose to be there. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just very hungry. Uh, yeah, we'll see you next I, I, I episode. See you guys. Thanks. What are we talking about next episode? We will talk live.